Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you so much for joining us today at the Pet Lover Summit. I'm here to introduce our amazing guest speaker, Sarah Jane Farrell. Hello, Sarah Jane. I'm going to read your bio now. Woo! Sarah Jane Farrell, international trauma-informed life coach, medical intuitive, animal communicator, and spiritual business mentor. Growing up during a violent bush war in Zimbabwe with an alcoholic father, Sarah Jane spent most of her youth longing for a sense of safety, connection, and belonging. It was the wild animals and her pets who gave her sanctuary, always present, loving, and constant in their communications. Over a lifetime of traumatic events, her deep connection and nonverbal communication with animals taught her how to re-engage in the world even after traumatic events with resilience and restored her trust in herself, others, and the world. She has dedicated her life to share what they continue to teach her, uh, that when you learn to create your own safety with a flexible nervous system, you thrive. She believes that when you shift the relationship you have with your protector parts and acknowledge where you have come from and what is causing you pain, you become safely embodied no matter how challenging life gets. I love that. You can value your gifts and have meaningful, loving relationship with yourself and others. Sarah Jane, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. It's always such a privilege to share what the animals have taught me about being a better human being. So I'm I'm really grateful to, to be here. Um, I love it. Wonderful. Yeah. I have a question actually um, from your bio. Um, what are our protector parts? Mm, it's mm. a great question. So, and a long one, but I'll try and make it short. So when we grow up, and we're sensitive and empathic which most animal lovers are um mm -hmm. we if we don't have the sense of secure attachment in other words if our if our parents weren't there for us and and didn't create safety or didn't see us or um, were too busy they weren't present with us yes. we take it on as that the world is is our identity with the world is us and how yes. we play into it as unimportant. It's often, there's a lot of shame there that maybe there's something wrong with us, that we're not enough. Mm. We start to gather this, this team of inner protectors. Um, and okay. that could be, you could look at them like archetypes, um, the orphan sure. child or the, um, the, sa the savior child or the invisible child that if I'm just quiet enough and I just don't make any trouble that maybe then I'll be loved. Right. And these are kind of like the, the, the inner team that, that mm. end up driving our life from a place of I am not feeling safe. I am not being seen. So I have to protect myself and I have to create my own safety. So these mm. are the archetypes that sort of play through in what we call attachment styles. Um, there's a, a, a um, there's many ways that you can look at it. But basically, we have these inner parts of ourselves that fracture at the age that we were when we decided that this experience mm. was too traumatic. So the overwhelm and the system couldn't handle the overwhelm where we yes. start to then employ these inner protector parts to step up and, and create mm -hmm. what we are needing that we're not necessarily getting from the outside. And obviously there's a lot of grief in there too, that, that needs mm -hmm. to be processed and moved and metabolized. So in my work um, on my own life, um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, with the background of a lot of, of trauma, horses held that space for me. Um, mm -hmm. My pets held that space for me where mm -hmm. it was like everything is welcome. Um, yeah. And, and that for me is what put me on that course of paying really close attention to how the animals navigate the world because mm -hmm. they're not so heavily impacted by our human culture that, that right. has started to um, sort of put proliferate those patterns of trauma that keep repeating themselves because we don't necessarily need those parts anymore but the minute mm -hmm. that we're triggered and we're living in a very uncertain time right now um, yes it's it's how do we be with those frightened parts and say okay I've got you as the secure adult 
Um, yes. And you can go play, you know, that, that sense of playful curiosity, the ability to, um, to create is impossible when we're in survival. And the animals right. are brilliant at showing us this. Um, I know mm -hmm. there's a book called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, but there's a lot of work that we've, <laughs> we've done in the field that, that at wild animals don't get sick. Um, their immune functions aren't impaired the way that we do uh, mm. because they know that, okay, um, I escaped the, 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 the jaws of a lion. Um, yes. They get up, they shake themselves off. And they carry on gra on grazing in the safety of the herd, and we've mm -hmm. lost that as people, which is why I think, um, especially with with you know being in so so much separation, what I call the separation sickness, which was really that really shown to us as the work that we need to be doing during right. um, the pandemic. It's the animals that share our lives with us that have have really grounded us into that sense of trust of you know how mm -hmm. do we how do we get back to ourselves um right if there are no eyes on us right the any kind of um pack animal has that that sense of you sleep and i'll watch if you ever watch horses in a field there's always yeah. one that stands guard right one that's 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 the lookout while everybody else rests and i think this mm -hmm. is part of our 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 crisis right now in in the sort of mm. fatigue that we're feeling and the, and whether that's compassion fatigue or anything else the animals are the ones that have that created that sort of sentient feeling of of that i'm not alone in the world yes and it is impacting them as well as you know the domestic ones that share our lives with us they they mm -hmm. they sense that too but when we sort of put um those those high levels of stress that they're right. now holding on to for us um, into our human lens. And we start to talk about that incredible struggle and the suffering that, that the animals are having um, out in the wild. I mean, the Ukraine story is sort of the latest sort of awareness that we're having of, gosh, you know, all yes. those people that had to leave their animals behind. And, yes. and that those animals are starving or walking the streets and trying to survive when they have been well taken care of in the past right it's right. very hard for us to keep keep us a, a, a sort of neutrality on it um mm -hmm. when we're when we're overly identified with our own human suffering yeah so i think that when you know when we can sort of actually sit down and really submerge ourselves with all our preconceived ideas for for what other what the animals might be experiencing Mm -hmm. um, what you start to see is perhaps a tremendous amount of relaxation and playfulness and curiosity and, and the ability to, to, to restore trust after they've had the trauma in their lives. There's so much yes. they can teach us about that. But yes. our cultural na narrative is, isn't, isn't that, is it? It's kind of um, something that they need to do and in order to be good enough to belong. And I, I know mm -hmm. um, that, you know, they're supposed to <laughs> become something in order for us to, to be worthy, that the animals don't operate yeah. from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, I, I resonate with all that. And I know that our viewers will too. Can you um, share with us how, what have the animals taught you? How do we go from trauma to trust? I'm sure it's just expanding a bit more on what you already dove into. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the most important and profound lessons that, that, that the elephants, especially I've, I've been so privileged to be able to work with rhinos and, and oh. elephants that have been orphaned um, in, in mm -hmm. the, tr the tragedy of their own demise that, um, yes. that they're willing to, they're, they're willing to, to just show up Um and and hold that space of of self love. You know they were they've already wow. mastered unconditional love, but mm -hmm. they never lie. I think that's the biggest one. You know the physical that our physical bodies never lie to us, and and we know that we're synthesizing oh, synthesizing information from from one another all the time and. And we yeah. process what's going on with one another. And when we are actually only taking in about 7% of the words that we're speaking and the rest of it's 93% of it is nonverbal. 
it, mm-hmm. it's the body language right that's the tone of voice it's the energy that we, yes. we don't really know quite how to talk about it um and the feeling for what's going on so mm-hmm. For me, it's that's the biggest thing is is how to be attuned, how to be listening to our own animal body, um, yes, in a way that isn't it 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 isn't dependent on what's going on around us. Mm-hmm. If that mm-hmm. makes sense, yeah, you know, it, sure. It's that enmeshment, the codependency that we yeah. don't quite know how to rewire patterns that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're trying to problem solve it from our minds rather than our body. Right. We need to, are you, so I'm reiterating, I think we need to cultivate it within ourselves rather than externally try to solve it up here. It's down here in the heart and in the nervous system and the body. Absolutely. Because, because we're tribal, we're tribal creatures, but we're also animals and, and because we're wired to survive just like our animal companions, um, we have, we kind of need a a frontal lobotomy. (laughs) We need to stop thinking or trying to think our way into feeling safe. We have to find a way to create safety inside our bodies. Mm. And this is where our our animal companions are so helpful. Um, When you look at them, if they're, if they're ill, you know it they're not masking masking it although a lot of animals do right um mm-hmm. because that would be a s- instant death for them but when they show sure. up and they're in fear mm-hmm. you see the fear we misidentify mm-hmm. it as aggression or the, but what they're saying is you need to look at your boundaries or or you yes. need to, to rest or you need to say no mm-hmm. um and because yes. we're trained, we're trained not to listen to our intuitive senses. Mm-hmm. We're, we're trained we um, that if we're empathic or we're sensitive, that we need to be medicated, right? Because yes. this, isn't, this isn't how the world works, that, that we are rewarded for problem solving. Mm-hmm. So we create mm-hmm. more problems where there aren't any sometimes. Yes. A lot of times we do that as a way of getting attention. But animals mm-hmm. just show up exactly as they are. And you yes. know who they are, which is why I think they give us such a sense of safety and a sense of belonging because all our parts are welcome. Yes. Yes. That totally makes sense to me. I'm just thinking about as my childhood for me too, I just trusted animals way more than I trusted humans. And, um, a lot of it had to do with what you're saying. Like we lie to ourselves. We don't present ourselves in a way that's, um, truthful, for example, if you ask many adults, how are you doing? They say, great. And they smile mm-hmm. and um, they're feeling so like sad and devastated inside, but they put on this facade. And as a child, mm-hmm. I didn't know what that was, but I felt that difference and I didn't like it. But the yeah. animals, as you said, they're like, great day <laughs> or yeah. I'm tired or whatever. So, um, yeah. and not to hold I, on to, not to hold on to the story, right. They don't yes. hold on to the story. Yeah, they let go. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. That was then. And this is now, and I'm safe. And now I can carry on being myself, but mm-hmm. you know, we're always looking at correction that yes. it isn't arising from sort of an actual threat mm-hmm. that it's, mm-hmm. that it's imagined. Yes. And, and where we've sort of lost touch with our intuitive spidey senses, our nervous systems. <laughs> spidey senses, inflex- love that. Inf- uh-huh. Yeah, then become inflexible because we mm-hmm. are, are operating from what, what do I need to be in order to, to be safe? Yes. And that's our, mm-hmm. our fears, our beliefs, our values, our emotions, and all our spiritual mm-hmm. things. And it's mostly unconscious, which is why we yeah. don't even know we're doing it most of the time. But if our nervous systems interprets that correction in in the exact same way it would like if we were literally poking fires fires with sticks yeah um, that that that's kind of like what are you doing you know our our inner child bits are going like what the hell you know yeah yeah Um, for sure and then there's that sense of shame or or something that's going on that wasn't yours in the first place it was assigned to us through cultures and family and and intergenerational trauma and all the collective beliefs that we've 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 
had put on us. Right. And we we're not feeling it. There's an incongruence because it doesn't, it, it's not true. So, so mm -hmm. I always kind of ask my clients, what is the lie that you're trying to make true as if Ooh. that would give you a sense of safety? Because wow. that's where most of the suffering comes from, isn't that's it? That's big. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's, again, you know, that's what the elephants and the, and the horses have really, in fact, they all have, but they keep mm -hmm. showing me over and over again that if we don't allow ourselves to be grounded in yes. our own truth, in our own perspective, um, that's when we start to get really confused because our physical body is synthesizing all this information and we're trying to force it sort of like the gas and on and the accelerator and oh the yeah at the uh -huh. same time and we wonder why we're all overwhelmed and 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 burnt out and sure. um and and feeling so disconnected so there's a soul loss that happens when we give up those aspects of ourselves that animals never right. do yeah so how do we like what's one thing people can take away with them today where do we start what what can we do is there a practice that we can do to help us cultivate that peace and truth within ourselves i would say by listening to the parts that are afraid mm. is the first step to saying everything is welcome here and to not maybe identify that I am sad or I am angry, but that I am walking with my sadness, that I am carrying yes. my sadness and that it is welcome there so that I can be with the joy at the same time. It's a, it's a, it's going well, holographic, right? It's that I am everything. Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the, the parts of me feel the parts of you that I'm no more important than the ant that walks across my windowsill. And the yes. ant is no more important than me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what if beautiful. it could be as simple as, as just being with a feeling, with a felt sense of that? I think a lot of the block sensations then start to come to the foreground. And when we're sort of submerged into that environment of, of how do I create my safety, that I'm responding to my environment firstly yes. my internal environment that's telling me i'm not safe but then actually looking around and saying is it true is it true orienting yourself to the room that you're sitting in and going in this moment i can be with this feeling and i'm safe yeah because that way we start to get more capacity to hold the uncertainty it's not going away right it's not going away. So it's not about, you know, trying to resist it or push it away, but more about um, settling in and relaxing into mm. that in the incremental moments of it, knowing you can't be happy all the time or sad all the time. For sure. That there is a pendulation between states because you are so connected in with everything around you, but mm -hmm. you are not a victim to it that you have the power of choosing from one choice to another so it's like live in 10 second increments of interesting point of view wow i'm feeling this i can be with this feeling and that's a really interesting point of view when that mm -hmm. that that conclusionary reality sort of shows up um, right it's it's kind of that deepest level of of that universal language of feeling um, sure. feeling the heart of of feeling that the animals are asking us to 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 do this work with our traumatized mm -hmm. parts yeah so that they can they don't have to carry it for us <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. yes that's beautiful I am so grateful for all the message that that you brought with us today I know there's so much more <laughs> so much more we could talk about um but I think you've really captured an amazing sense of um, some of the information that the animals brought through to you to help us um, embody our truth and feel safe. And um, yeah, I, I, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, my absolute <laughs> pleasure. Yeah, we could, we well, could speak about this for the rest of our lives and still uh, yeah, yes, know absolutely. the mystery uh, of 
of what they have to share with, with us. Yes, um, yes, I agree. There's so much more to learn, but it's a beautiful starting point. And I thank you so much for bringing that to us today. So Sarah Jane, how can people find you? What is your website? Mm, thank you. So they can find me at my name, sarahjanefarrell.com. Okay, and that's gonna be, there's gonna be a link below you guys. So you can just click on it. And I understand you have three free gifts for the viewers today. Do you want to talk about that? Um, I can't remember what I gave you, but I think okay. a good place. A good, <laughs> I can a good tell place. you and then we can. Um, yeah, sure. Universal biosignatures, attachment yeah. style, and the right. excerpt from your book. Okay, wonderful. So that sort of okay. give you a, a, a wide sort of choice box of, of how, ways that you can work with this. I think one of the biggest places is when people start to hear about the, the work um, that I do mm -hmm. is we have to understand where we've come from in mm -hmm. order to be here, be present. Yes. With what it is. So the attachment style quiz is just a really easy way for, yes. for you to get to understand some of these protective parts and your primary adaptation I call them survival patterns of adaptation because they kept you alive okay. and they were ingenious in keeping right. you alive when you were a child yes. but they may be blocking you from completing or following through or doing anything because the fear comes up and then that that little kid inside of you pulls you back to what's safe so yes. that's a great okay. way that you can start to to understand where you've come from and get curious about how you're going to be going forward Nice. And um, I have a dosha quiz as well, which is the animal one where you can see your compatibility with your animals, but all of them kind of go give you the same route, right? Back to sure. how okay. these amazing creatures come in with their own soul contracts to have their own experiences and to be their, your, your teachers and guides with you in this lifetime. Um, right. So that's quite fun to do because we want the curiosity and, and the playfulness and that they are offering us to, to look at our, our wounds without making ourselves wrong. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the biogeometry, I, I included that because right now with all the overwhelm, there's, there is a lot of things that need to be physically done, right? We have to take aligned action. And this right. is one of those beautiful pieces of ancient technology that I practice in my work. Um, it's been around since the Egyptian times, and it it is a combination of what we call qualitative energetic balancing symbols. Okay. That that were created by a man called Dr. Ibrahim Karim, who I studied with. But basically, mm. you're going to see a mat, something that looks like a mat with um, resonators. So it's got these little resonators on oh, the yeah. end of it, which is like an amplifier. And in the in inside are all these hundreds of different biosignatures that that were spe I specifically created them for people right now um, wow and you don't have to do anything but they're they're just trust you know set the intention that these are going to support your body in balancing and protecting you from 5 5g you know the 5g all the, mm -hmm. the psychic viruses that are coming to us from the media and from yeah our environments. and um people can use those in different ways so i suggest you just print it out put it underneath your mattress and and let it do its work or where you're yes. all day um just looking at it you're going to impregnate your body's um cellular memory to mm -hmm. recognize those those symbols and work with the body so it's just a mm -hmm. nice a wonderful way to work with it um some people wow. say that the energies are really really strong um, that they that it keeps them up all night. So if you kind of feel like, gosh, it's a little bit too intense, you can move them away. Um, if it's too much for you to be actually under under your bed, and another yeah. another fun way to do that because the animals just say, you know, why don't you play? Play is is creativity. Uh -huh. Is if you are particularly drawn to one of the symbols or two of the symbols on that mat, um, trace it off and just gaze at it or look at it wow. or put it on your computer screen and it will work its magic on you oh my gosh that's amazing and, yeah Woo! yeah okay and then and then the other one is because grief is 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 such a big p missing piece mm -hmm. I think in in work because we we're kind of living a death phobic society I wrote a, wow. a book um 
that actually covers all types of grief and how to carry your grief alongside your joy and be able mm. to connect with your pets if they have passed or people in spirit. And yes. um, so it is a book specifically for pet for pet lovers, but it works. And what's the name of the book? Of grief. It's called Until We Meet Again. Love it. Until we meet mm -hmm. again, how to carry you carry your grief after pet loss and connect with him in the afterlife. And it's full of beautiful meditations and activations and practical wow. tools on how to move and metabolize your grief, which I think is a moral obligation that we are all being um, compelled uh, to yes. do right now in, in the climate that we're living in. Um, mm -hmm. To, to really go down, you know, to go, to go down in the dark descent, which we are in to, mm -hmm. um, to process this together, um, if we're going to change anything in the world. So there's an excerpt from the book there, um, that, that it gives people a taste of, of how we can start to move our grief together, um, mm -hmm. as a, mm -hmm. as a, as a missing piece, I think of, of healing. That's beautiful. So all of those three free three free gifts you guys are also <laughs> down below available for you right now a gift to you from sarah jane farrell sarah jane thank you so much for being part well, of the pet lover summit and for sharing all this honor. amazing information with us today we can truly feel your heart and your gifts and i truly appreciate you thank you so much for being here today my absolute pleasure thank you